Hello world, GreatGizaPyramid.com. How does the Great Giza Pyramid function? Well, a lot of people look at it as just a big pile of rocks in the middle of the desert. But what they don't pay attention to is that the very topmost layer is a slightly different rock, and that the 35th level is slightly deeper and slightly taller than any other level. Now, by itself, you might not notice that, but back in the 1800s and early 1900s, people would go up onto the top of the pyramid, they noticed that their hair would stand up on end, and that if they stuck their hands out, they could get like little sparks to shoot from it. That's because, in essence, they were standing on a large Van de Graaff generator, because any static electricity, which would get dropped off by the air, blowing back and forth, all those nooks and crannies, would get dropped onto the static, onto the Great Giza Pyramid, and normally would work themselves down to ground. But because the 35th level is the entire circumference of the pyramid, it kind of quarantines that static electricity at the top of the pyramid. Now, it would, under normal circumstance, build up enough energy to breach that little gap. But what you're going to do instead is pull that static electricity into the system. Now, I'm going to truncate the system a little bit because you guys should kind of know what it looks like. And then what they're going to do is pull that static electricity down into the system through an alternate measure below the 35th parallel, sorry, 35th level, over into the Queen's Chamber, where being that it's gotten itself below that level, it actually taps it out of the room. And then from there, we can argue with Chris Dunn about how it brings it down below the Giza Plateau and and pulls that static electricity through the, I don't really want to call them aquifers, because they are very squared and drilled canals and, uh, and conduits. But they were using a conduit filled with liquid the same way we use copper wires today. And they're pulling that static electricity through the system. Now, if you want to expand on how they did it, I'd be happy to, to fully elaborate how down within the subterranean chamber you've got your piece of granite down in the pit, and you've got a piece of granite in the grotto, a piece of granite in the grotto and a piece of granite in the pit are working together to cause basic electrolysis. The oxygen works its way up and out the system, and in the process there's a whole lot that it actually does there. We cover that in the magic mix with magnetism and subterranean video, along with the system down here, which I call the system down under, being that this entire section is underground level. And then from there, the hydrogen in the system is brought up to the top of the king's chamber, where it's burnt together with the ambient oxygen from outside, 21% oxygen, with the pure hydrogen, burns together, becomes water again, which is what actually causes this whole system. And um, be happy to elaborate on that. If you have any questions, happy to answer them. Please contact me, greatgazepyramid.com. Contact at greatgazepyramid.com. You can send text messages or let, leave me voicemails at 657-229-GIZA, which is 657-229-4492. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or any situations that you feel are inaccurate with the laws of nature and how I see the system. Thank you.